You always hear about people talking about contributing to open source, but you rarely hear people talk about being a project maintainer. I know what you're thinking. Eddie, I'm not a project maintainer. Well, you probably are. Do you have any public repos on GitHub? Have you customized your GitHub profile? Then you are an open source maintainer. In this video, I'm gonna show you behind the scenes of being an open source maintainer. I'm gonna go through GitHub notifications and you're gonna see that the community has taken care of most of them already, but it's good for me to keep up to date with these projects and these notifications. Another thing we do on live streams is we review your open source projects, but we also review your resumes. So people can submit a resume review, but please always remember to remove your personal details. You don't wanna dox yourself. And you can see this got raised 16 days ago and I haven't got around to reviewing it yet on a live stream but look at the community look how much they collaborate with each other and give each other feedback because you can all learn from each other in eddie hub we really believe everyone is a mentor as well as a mentee and i really like this and look at the context that's been added so people can join in the conversation to see which parts they're talking about this is really really good so i'm just going to say you know great collaboration and we will review this in the live stream soon For those of you who are new here, my name is Eddie. I'm a self-taught full stack developer and I'm a GitHub star and GitHub star of the year. That's one out of 55 million people. I'm here to share my knowledge and my experience with you so you can get the job, client and money that you deserve. If that sounds interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below and hit the bell button so you get notified every time that I go live or post a video. Let's head over to my computer. Here's my GitHub profile. Don't forget to drop me a follow. Let's go to the oldest notification that I've got. I've got about 1200 notifications from the last seven days to go through and you're gonna help me go through these. So let's go to the oldest one and have a look. So here's an interesting one. So this pull request is talking about adding VS Code to the Git Ignore file. I never usually do this because this is in my global Git Ignore and I kind of expect people to put it in their own global Git Ignore because one person might be using an IDE A and another person might be using IDE B and another person C. You get the idea. But my point is that what you're going to have a massive Git Ignore file. But you know it's not the end of the world that's been included but I'm still going to give some thoughts on this. So if we have a look at the files changes you can see See, this is really VS Code specific. See how we were just talking a second ago about then other IDEs will need to be included. So now we can start seeing that IntelliJ IDE ignores are being included in addition to the VS Code ones. Where do you stop? people will start including more and more. But again, it's not the end of the world, but as a project maintainer, I just think developers should exclude any specific files to them in their global Git Ignore. And on my client Stargate repository, you can see that I raised a pull request and I put some output of what was going on, what it was, what was happening, and some screenshots. This was me dockerizing the project and publishing it to the GitHub container registry. But you can see the community really got involved and made some suggestions which was i think was really really awesome having their feedback and the second pair of eyes and their opinion and from their experience was really interesting so remember you can always review a project even if you're not the maintainer on the project and i highly recommend that you do that so this one's already been merged the community have reviewed it they've left comments collaborated with the contributor and it's been merged i used to comment on these and say thank you so much for the collaboration but to be honest it just gives more notifications and probably a bit of spam and the contributors to the project so now i just let the community get on with it and unless i need to get involved i don't leave a comment so i'm just going to close that one and mark the notification as done next again this is one of our community repos eddie hub community and it's for the hackathon and people have collaborated it seems like there's been conversation back and forth now things are out of date because things have been updated which is great and the pull request has already been merged and this one, because there was so much collaboration going on, I actually did leave a comment and say, great collaboration, because there was a lot of back and forth. It wasn't a simple pull request, but they managed to work together to deliver a great piece of work. This one got closed. So this one's an enhancement for the Edibot project within our community. And you can see there's conversations already going on and people have decided to close it. So I'm not gonna get involved. I'm gonna leave them and move on to the next one. This is a great start. I'm going through notifications and I haven't done any work yet, really. This is the power of the community. They're so supportive and so collaborative. It's really important. Like in Eddie Hub, we say collaboration first, 
code second. And if you think of the open source community, that's how it works. Because first of all, you raise an issue to start the discussion, to make people aware of your idea or the bug you found or whatever it is. And then once you've got an idea of what you want to do, you make the changes and raise a pull request, which is more discussion on the changes that have been made. So it's discussion before any changes are made, and then it's discussion after the changes are made. So it's a lot of collaboration going on there. And the changes in the code part is pretty small, because although the changes are in the middle, you've got to remember that out of those changes, a small part of that is going to be code. A lot of it's going to be documentation, automated testing, infrastructure as code, so many things that it could be. On to the next notification. This is an interesting one because I actually wrote the original feature on this on our Eddie bot within our Discord community. And the idea is you could get the bio for somebody else. So you could ask for your bio and by default it would bring back your bio, but you could ask for somebody else's. But the downside is because you're doing an at at that person, a notification is sent to that person. So it's not great if people want to see other people's profiles and it keeps notifying that person. So it's great they've written a really good issue, screenshots, additional context, really, really like that. So let's have a read through. And it looks like there's two conversations going on here. There is the notification one, which we were talking about a moment ago, but then also you can see other people have started also talking about documentation. And I think the documentation should go in another issue. So I'm just going to mention that. Okay, so I left a comment saying that we should split it out. This ticket is quite important. I think it shouldn't notify the user. I and mean, we knew it would come up. When I wrote this feature originally a few months ago, maybe six months ago, we knew this would come up. So I'm gonna leave that as a comment. Move on to the next one. And you can see some of these issues are quite old. I have did put a comment 20 days ago, and then 15 days ago, there was another reply. So I'm about two weeks behind in my GitHub notifications. But it's really great that the community realized that most open source contributors have a full-time job. They have a family, they have a personal life, they have work, they have, okay, there's a lot of overlap there, but you get the idea. And we do a lot of this on the side. So it's great that people are patient. Some people aren't, some people will DM you on Twitter, as well as Discord, as well as LinkedIn, and say, hey, I've done a pull request, please review it. And it's just fix a typo, which is great. I do love typos that get fixed, but there's nothing urgent about them and they'll chase you like every 10 minutes. I like the suggestion by Karuna that having a description for the roles would be really nice. So you've done about, I don't know, five notifications so far and I've got 1,200 still to go. We'll get there. I'm not gonna do them all in this video, but hopefully I can show you a bit of variety in this video. Some of them are quite easy. Some of them require a bit more reading and a bit of background understanding. That's why it's so important to write an issue with context and to also write a comment with context. This one's a really good suggestion by Karuna to add the image bot to resize images more efficiently as a GitHub action. So I wanna add this as an enhancement, or well, not duplicate, enhancement. And I think this should get done. So I wanna say, Great idea. And someone can pick that up. It's probably maybe a good first issue, potentially. Let's add that. We also need to actually probably align our issues because some of our other repos have got more descriptive issues. Okay, next one. This one's quite long. Let's have a look. It's for our Hacktoberfest practice repo, but as you can see, it's been merged. The conversation looks really good and it got merged. That was an easy one. And this is a pull request and it also got merged. So this is awesome, looks good. This is an issue and it got closed because the pull request got merged in. And if I click on the pull request, I bet you it has a closes at the top. Yes, it does. And so therefore it closed the issue. So that's great. It's awesome to link your pull request and your issues together. Another pull request by the community, issue 460. Multiple people have reviewed it, which is really good because people can give different perspective and people spot different things. Here you can see some of the inline comments and that's really, really good. And it got merged. Quite a few people in there. So I might leave a comment and just say great collaboration. Collaboration. We'll call them Eddie Hubbers. I think that's how you spell it. Great collaboration, Eddie Hubbers. Is that how you spell it? There we go. Leave that as a question. So this is a suggestion on upgrading one of our libraries, Moment.js. It does a time zone calculation for us. There's been some discussions going on with some suggestions. And then Stalebot, which after 30 days, if an issue doesn't get any activity, it then marks it for close. And then if again, a few days later, it gets no activity, it closes it. So it got closed, but Nick opened this, which is great because we still do need this issue. This is a, an issue that is still open and there's been 14 comments on it. So it's quite a lot of conversation and we use Alexa JS 
to detect the terminology of the words, make sure the words are inclusive, so people don't say guys. And people started using guys with a Z to avoid the bot notifying them, giving them a warning that they should use folks or people. So we really need to catch that as well. So people have discussed it, they'd like to work on it, which is really good. I got involved in the conversation 20 days ago, came up with a suggestion, and let's have a look. The community are having a great discussion, so I'm not gonna you know, get involved. I think they're doing a great job here. I'll let them get on with this one. And this one is related. So we were talking about guys of a Z before, and now people have also been using bruh, and it's supposed to be the cool word of bro, which we definitely don't want, because it's not cool. Lots of great discussions, but I wanna share some thoughts on this as well. Gave my two cents. So this is my open source tips book, which is quite a bit out of date, but it's really great for George, I hope I pronounced the name right, to contribute and translate this to Spanish. We had a translation, so we had a Spanish version created and they noticed a bug. So I actually fixed it and I just wanted them to verify that it's fixed. So they've given me a nice message, so I'm just right back to say, Thank you. So this is review my resume that we mentioned before, but what's different about this is it's been closed and it's had loads of great feedback from the community, but I haven't reviewed it on a live stream. And so I'm not saying my opinion is the most important, but the great thing about reviewing on a live stream is they get a shout out as well, which I think is really, really nice and important. So I'm just gonna write a message and say, did you mean to close it? I would still like to review on a live stream and give you a shout out for sharing. So I'll leave a comment. It's entirely up to them if they wish to reopen it or not. So the life of a project maintainer is quite hard work. I think I think we've probably done about 100 notifications, which is great. We've just got 1,100 still to go. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. How do you manage your notifications? I used to be able to stay on top of them and every day make sure I got them done, but I only was getting about 10 a day. Now that I'm probably getting one, 200 a day, easy at least it's very hard to keep on top of those as well as other discord notifications twitter notifications linkedin i must get one to 200 from every social platform and, and github is a social platform so every day i'm getting about a thousand notifications in total and it's really really hard to you know keep on top of that so unfortunately at the moment my github notifications are suffering so i really apologize if you've been waiting but the great thing is like i mentioned the community have been getting involved so hopefully you haven't been waiting too long don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe below if you haven't already and I look forward to seeing you in discord so we can chat between live streams and videos another no, blah. another thing we do on live streams we re review I, don't, I can't even talk what time is it 3 a.m okay